Is there a more confusing topic in accounting than bonds payable? I'm not sure there is. In this episode, we are going to break down what you need to understand in order to understand the textbook that you're learning bonds payable from. I'm Carolyn Grimm. This is Accounting How To. That's my sidekick, Terrence. We are here to put the fun in accounting fundamentals. So whenever I am going to be teaching bonds payable to my financial accounting or intermediate accounting class, I know I need to get a good night's sleep the night before because it's complicated and it's hard to understand it. So to help you understand bonds payable, we're going to start with the balance sheet because this is a piece that a lot of accounting textbooks do not include in the bonds payable chapter. And before we even start talking about bonds payable, I wanna talk about a couple of other accounts that we've dealt with in previous chapters. So we had a chapter about accounts receivable and we did that whole allowance for doubtful accounts thing. So on the balance sheet, what we're gonna see for accounts receivable would be accounts receivable, full amount, what everybody owes you, minus this allowance for doubtful accounts that gives us what we call the net realizable value of our accounts receivable account. And that allowance for doubtful accounts is subtracting from the value of our asset because we wanna make sure that when somebody looks at our financial statements, they're aware of what the true value of that account is. The next account I wanna talk about is a fixed asset account. And this would have been, again, a whole chapter that we cover in financial accounting and intermediate accounting. So we covered fixed assets, things like buildings and vehicles, and we depreciated those fixed assets because they lose value over time. So just like with accounts receivable, we want to make sure we are reporting the real value of those fixed assets. And we do that by reporting the cost that we pay for those assets and subtracting from that, that accumulated depreciation that we did as an adjusting journal entry from way back in the beginning of your first accounting class. So on our balance sheet, we're going to show the full value of the asset, what we paid for it, less that accumulated depreciation, that loss in accounting value, and then we're going to show our net book value so that we are representing that our assets have depreciated somewhat or all the way over a period of time. So with bonds payable, now we're on a liability account rather than an asset account. With bonds payable, we're going to do something similar. So what we're going to do with bonds payable is on the balance sheet, you're going to see the amount that we borrowed, because bond payable means we borrowed money. Somebody is going to get interest from us plus the full amount that we borrowed. So on the balance sheet, we're going to show the face value of that obligation. So it's going to show up as the full amount of that bond on our bonds payable account. But we're going to have two other accounts that are going to help us to keep track of the value of this bond. And those two accounts are discount on bonds payable and premium on bonds payable. So let's review why those things exist. When we sell a bond, somebody's going to lend us money. We are selling them a bond. We're going to give them back their money plus interest. We put a value on the interest rate of that bond when the bond is created. So let's say that we're going to offer our bond at 10% interest. So if somebody buys our bond, they're going to get 10% interest. Now, if in the marketplace, if all the other bonds that are similar to ours are paying 10% interest, everybody's kind of on the same level. So in that case, we would report that bond at its face value with no discount, no premium. So if our bond is $100,000, the market rate is 10%, and the rate that we're offering is 10%, then on the balance sheet, what we're going to see is under our long-term liabilities, we will see bonds payable for $100,000. That is the value, that's the amount that is going to be due from us, the borrower, to pay back that money that we borrowed. But the thing with the bond market is, it's always changing. It's like the stock market, things go up and down. The bond market is the same. Things go up and down. People offer bonds at different interest rates. So let's talk about what would happen if we are offering 10% but everybody else with similar bonds is offering 11%. If you as an investor would rather get 10% interest or would you rather get 11% interest? All things equal, you're going to want that higher interest rate. 
So now we're offering a bond for 10% and everybody else can buy a bond for 11%. So now we have to make our bond look more attractive. We have to make it look prettier. We have to dress it up in some way. So what we're gonna do then is we're going to offer a discount on that bond. We're going to say, if you give us $96,000, later on, we're gonna pay you 100,000. So we're gonna take 96,000 and we're gonna pay you 100,000. That's a discount. Think about that discount as a way for us to adjust our interest rate because we can't change the interest rate once the bond has been issued, this is a way that we're going to kind of equal out the marketplace so that we can get people to buy our bond rather than somebody else's. So on the balance sheet, the way that's gonna show up is we're gonna have our long-term liabilities, we'll have our bonds payable for $100,000, the full amount, and then we're going to subtract from that this discount on bonds payable so the value that we are carrying on our books is 96,000. So think about it in these terms. How much cash did we get? We got 96,000 because we gave them a discount on that bond. So the value of our liability is equal to the cash that we got, but we're also recognizing that at the end of this, we're gonna be giving them the full $100,000. We're using that discount on bonds payable as a way to keep track of that. Now let's say that we are offering 10% on our $100,000 bond, but the market is only offering 9%. So now our bond looks prettier because you would rather have 10% interest than have 9% interest when you're investing. So because our bond is more attractive, you're going to get more interest. We're going to sell that at a premium. And again, that premium and discount is just a way of evening out that interest rate. So now if the premium on our bond was $4,000. On our balance sheet, what we're gonna see is long-term liability, that bond's payable for $100,000. We're going to add on the premium to that amount. So now our carrying amount is 104,000. When we're talking about the discount on bonds payable account, this is a contra account. So it's acting the opposite of our regular liability account. So if we want to increase it, we're going to debit it. If we want to decrease it, we're going to credit it. Now the premium on bonds payable account is an adjunct account. It adds on to the parent account. So it works the opposite of our allowance for doubtful accounts and our accumulated depreciation account. So if we want to increase that, we're going to credit it. Works like a regular liability account. So now let's talk about what happens to that discount on bonds payable and that premium on bonds payable. As we pay interest on this bond, we're going to be adjusting that discount or premium account. We're going to be amortizing it over time. So whatever the length of the bond is, we're going to be using up that discount or that premium over time. And it's going to go in conjunction with our interest payments. So as we do our entries for those bonds, what's gonna happen with that discount or premium is it's going to get used up over time and the carrying amount of that liability is going to get closer and closer to the face value, the original principal amount, that $100,000. It's going to get closer and closer to that amount. And then when we pay that liability, this account will be at zero, just like any other liability. As we pay it off, once we've paid it in full, it's going to be at zero on our balance sheet. So what we're doing with this discount on bonds payable or premium on bonds payable is we're going to amortize that over time to adjust that carrying amount to what it actually is. Because a lot of times when we're figuring interest, we're figuring it on the carrying amount. So why does it have to be so complicated? Unfortunately, we're barely scratching the surface of the complication for financial accounting and intermediate accounting. It gets worse the deeper into accounting you get. But this is why we're doing this. It all comes back to the matching principle. The matching principle says that you need to get your revenue in the month where you earn it, and you need to get your expenses into the month where you're making revenue. So for example, if I have a store and I buy merchandise and resell it, when I sell it to my customer, I have revenue and I have an expense for that merchandise. Not for all the other merchandise that's still in inventory, just for that sale. So this is a similar thing. We want to get the interest expense. And remember I said that a discount and a premium is a way of keeping track of that 
difference in interest rate. What we're doing is we are matching our expense to the month where it belongs. So we want those expenses to be in the months that are being covered by that repayment of the liability. Now, if you need help doing your journal entries for bonds payable and the interest payments that go along with them, hop on over to accountinghowto.com, go up to the search bar, put bonds up there, and it will bring you all of the information that you need in order to nail those journal entries for your accounting class. Until next time, stay balanced, my friends.